Hi guys. So today I would like to discuss a um, new tool that have been released, uh, I think, like, uh, yeah, like 16 days ago. Um, so it's basically Cargo Lib AFL. So um, it's um, kind of a, a replacement of um, um, LibFuzzer using the cargo uh, command. So it will be a new cargo subcommand. And, and the main idea is um, it will be pretty similar to uh, the way we are currently using like cargo fuzz, uh, but uh, under the hood, it will not be libfuzzer, but uh, libafl that will be uh, used. So uh, it's created by Andrea, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, co-creators of uh, libafl and one of the main maintainer of uh, afl++. And um, for the moment, it's still kind of a proof of concept, but it's actually really nice. And there is uh, actually some really interesting points and features uh, that I want to uh, discuss. So for that, uh, as usual, I create a kind of a tiny um, cheat sheet uh, for you to, to follow. Basically, for the installation, it's really simple. Uh, we just need to be sure we are using the nightly uh, um, compiler, the nightly toolchain for Cargo. And then you can directly use uh, cargo and libafl as a subcommand. And that's pretty much all. So let me just uh, give you a quick demo right there. Uh, cargo libafl. So as you can see, we have some um, extra subcommand for this one. Uh, add, build, coverage, uh, fmt, init, list, run. So uh, same kind of command than for uh, libafl uh, in that case. So for the target of today, I uh, took back the exact same target than for uh, libafl for the previous video um, that you have uh, a link in the description below. Uh, basically, this target was uh, human time. Um, it's a really simple um, time parser and formatter. Uh, I'm not expecting to find any bugs on, on this one. Um, and the, the main reason I'm using this one is because the API is actually pretty simple and it will be a good example for you to uh, learn and compare. So um, there is uh, actually three functions that are really interesting. Uh, the first one is a format duration. So we, we are providing kind of like two hours, 37 minutes and so on. So this kind of string. And based on that, it will convert that into a duration. Uh, so that's one uh, of them. Um, the second one will be parse RFC 3339. Uh, that takes a string as an input and um, like something like that and will uh, create a system time object from that. And we have uh, RFC 3339 week, uh, and this one uh, will support some extra features and so on. Okay, so uh, nothing really complicated. In terms of um, creating your fuzzing harness, uh, as usual, so um, I put the, the one from LibFuzzer right there. So just to give you an idea, parse duration um, with LibFuzzer, we was using something like that, importing LibFuzzer first target uh, macro, uh, parse duration, we are converting this uh, array of U8 into a string right there. And if the result is okay, so it's a valid string, we are providing this string to parse duration. Really simple. For this one, it's pretty similar in terms of uh, code. We are just calling RFC 3339. And in that case, we are calling RFC 3339 week. Okay, nothing complicated. So um, when you are using Cargo LibAFL, you will basically need to have the same format and the same kind of uh, fuzzing harness. And uh, if you want a direct comparison, actually, uh, let me uh, maybe uh, split my... Um, I don't remember where I can split my stuff. Um, yeah, forget. Um, let's open this one. It will be like the weak one. And as you can see, let me put that right there. We're going to do it differently. OK, so if you compare the one from um, so this one from lib, libfuzzer and this one from libafl, the only difference we can see actually is the um, import. This specific import. So Andrea did a really good job to make it the more simple as possible. And basically, you can just pick some older targets that you have from LibFuzzer and just 
um, replace the import right there and you will basically be good to go. It's exactly the same piece of code. Uh, I basically just pick one, uh, replace the uh, import. Uh, instead of flip further, we put cargo libfl helper and that's work. So that's, that's actually really, really nice. So let me close that. Uh, we're going to go back to the cheat sheet. Uh, a quick stuff I want to mention is uh, regarding the uh, version of uh, libafl uh, that uh, you are using uh, and you are downloading. Basically, uh, before doing this video, I was testing the stuff and it was version 1.7. And I figured out that uh, actually everything was running inside the memory and nothing was stored on the disk. So I asked Andrea and he told me that uh, it was uh, expected to be in the the new update and that's actually what he did like two hours after so really nice uh, of him and basically right now on this version you can store the all the corpora or the files that will be generated during fuzzing will be stored on the disk so it will be a bit slower slower um, but uh, you will be able to reuse those uh, examples so that's the stuff regarding human times. That's good. Uh, I think right now we can just start fuzzing. So um, if it's not done already, you can just do init uh, and list. So it will list all the fuzzing harness available. So in my case, I have all parseration uh, and so on. That's what you can actually find in the first folder, the targets and uh, all those files, as you can see. And right now, we're going to launch the uh, fuzzer. So we're going to do cargo nightly libfl run. And after that, uh, we need to provide, for example, this one, parse rfc 3339 week. If I'm launching the stuff, I will, it will compile the stuff and I will get an error because um, in that case, um, for cargo libfl, you need to specify the amount of core that you want. So uh, let's put only one core for the uh, moment, um, one. And I think I should also use that like that. And it's running. So as you can see, that's the interface of um, Cargo LibFL. Um, that's uh, pretty interesting because it's a completely different interface than what uh, you have with Cargo Fuzz usually. Um, it's uh, especially there is one part that is for me is really interesting is the chart uh, on top of it. So um, as you can see in terms of speed with a single core we are uh, at uh, currently like 91,000. Okay, and uh, we have a, a simple graph of like the evolution of the speed. So at the beginning it was pretty slow, and then uh, right after we was. Um, stabilizing to something like that. So it seems to be pretty stable for the moment. As you can see, the corpora is actually pretty tiny. Uh, there is not a lot of stuff to, to be done in that case, it seems. Um, so you know what, let's uh, switch to another one. To quit this stuff, I uh, click on the Q uh, key and after that you can just do Control uh, C. Uh, let's run, um, I think it's parse duration that is a bit more interesting duration with uh, again only one core um, and as you can see the corpus is actually uh, growing bigger and bigger in terms of execution we have also some difference so as you can see right there um, it's uh, from time to time we are losing um, some speed and that's perfectly fine um, ideally by the time uh, you should have something that will um, go up uh, pretty quickly and after that decrement because the more you are uh, going um, deep inside the code base, um, the more time it will take. Uh, so that's why you, you should uh, just lose some execution uh, speed uh, over the time. So that's pretty nice. For the moment, we can keep it uh, like that. Um, something I really like is if you click on the G um, uh, key, you will uh, basically switch from uh, to, to another chart and you can switch to the corpus uh, chart. So as you can see, that's the number of files in the corpora um, that will uh, basically grow over time. So um, you should have something that will be uh, so like that, uh, basically like a, a, a logarithm. Uh, that's perfectly fine, perfectly normal, uh, but that's, uh, that's actually uh, pretty nice to, add, to get some visual, in, such visual information that's something that is usually not the case on 
all the other feathers. We don't have any chart by, by default. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty good. We are getting some good information. The corpora, uh, execution, total number of execution, the execution speed, and the number of edges we are reaching against the total number of edges. So we have kind of uh, the, we have the percentage of coverage right there, 5%. So uh, that's, um, that's actually pretty nice. If we quit the stuff, uh, since I'm running the uh, new newer version, uh, I should have all my file uh, directly stored inside a dedicated folder. This folder is actually under uh, Fuzz um, Artifact Artifact Parse, um, for example, Parse RFD. It was the one before Corpus. And inside uh, we have like, uh, it was like 10 files or something like that. And for part duration uh, inside the corpus, we can actually count how many files we have. And uh, you will see that uh, I have like more than 1000 files. Um, and it's actually a bit weird because I only got like 200 uh, in corpora. Uh, the main reason is because um, actually Andrea uh, modified the, um, the, the cargo libfl and as I mentioned, it's still a proof of concept. And um, one key feature that is missing right now is actually the um, replay uh, of the existing corpora. So if you are relaunching the further um, like, like that, it will basically start from zero and not reuse an existing corpora. So, um, I mean, there is, um, don't hesitate to, to open some GitHub issue and to report if, if you see something like that. Uh, Andrea basically told me that, yeah, it's, it's still in progress and it's actually really nice of him to uh, actually take your feedback and, and reply pretty quickly uh, regarding that. Um, in terms of speed, if we uh, I quickly compare to LeapFuzzer, um, I think LeapFuzzer is a bit, Faster, um, I don't faster compared to the right on disk. Maybe not compared to the um, corpus in memory. I mean, I need to do some testing again. Uh, but basically, uh, I, I mean, I mean, it's not a competition, uh, and that's always what I'm telling in in my training and on the courses and so on. Uh, basically, the main idea is uh, those further will work differently. Uh, they will maybe not use the same mutation algorithm. That will not maybe. Um, interpret uh, what, uh, like the in terms of coverage, uh, it will not be uh, maybe at the edge level or at the block level and so on. So all of these difference between further um, are really important. Um, so what I always advise is basically to run the same target on using multiple feathers, and that's really nice that we have a leap further as one of them uh, right now. So um, that's uh, pretty much all. So as I mentioned, the V18 is the one that will store the corpus on the disk. The ideal, uh, I don't know if it's possible with LibFL, will be to basically have all the corpus directly in memory, but only when we are reaching some new coverage, we are storing the stuff on the disk. Uh, I don't know if it's the case right now, because based on the drop in terms of speed between the two versions. I suppose it's not like that, but I, I may be uh, wrong uh, regarding that. So um, I will uh, let you give it a try. As usual, you have all the stuff uh, directly um, on, the, um, on the website and on the links below. Um, congrats, uh, congrats, sorry, again to Andrea. Uh, that's uh, some, some really good stuff. And I really like the, the UI. I think there is uh, a, a bit more work to, to be done on that and it will be even better in the future uh, if we can have some um, direct feedback graphically uh, like that. It's really a good compromise between the simple, simpleness of, uh, for example, the Ongfuzz interface and uh, the uh, AFL interface that basically AFL or AFL++ that for me give you too much information that are not really useful. Uh, in that case, that's uh, pretty in the middle. So I think it's uh, actually uh, really nice. So um, I will invite you to, to stay tuned uh, and maybe um, uh, follow uh, what Andre is doing on, on GitHub and uh, of course to, uh, to to stay aware when the, when we will get a new version for this one. I will definitely use that and add that to, to my trainings. Um, so that's uh, really interesting.
Um, if you want to download all the files and uh, everything, uh, as usual, it's directly uh, right there on my uh, introduction uh, courses uh, regarding Rust Fuzzy. So I hope you enjoy and uh, let me know what you would like to see in the next video. I may be planning to um, do uh, some video about uh, fuzzing um, a smart contract and blockchain uh, code uh, written in Rust. So uh, let me know if it's something that uh, you are interesting, uh, interested about. Uh, thank you and see you next time.